As respiratory therapists, we spend a lot of time focusing on mechanical ventilators. We often learn about the different modes, settings, and how they function. With that said, unfortunately, we often overlook the process that entails the initiation of a new patient who needs mechanical ventilatory support. When setting up a patient on the ventilator, you must understand the indications, contraindications, and initial settings to use, each of which may be different depending on the patient's condition. We created this quick video to hopefully make the learning process easier for you while providing a brief overview of this topic. So if you're ready, let's get into it. First and foremost, we need to talk about the goals of mechanical ventilation. A mechanical ventilator in and of itself does not cure a patient of their initial underlying condition. The ventilator is only meant to provide breathing support until the patient's condition can be treated and reversed. With that said, here are the primary goals of mechanical ventilation. To improve gas exchange, to reverse hypoxemia, to reverse acute respiratory failure, to provide relief for respiratory distress, to reverse respiratory muscle fatigue, to improve pulmonary mechanics, to prevent or reverse atelectasis, to improve lung compliance, to prevent lung injury, to maintain lung and airway functionality, and to prevent respiratory muscular dystrophy. Again, the goals of mechanical ventilation will be different for each and every patient. These are just a few of the most common examples. Now let's talk about the indications for mechanical ventilation. As a general rule of thumb, mechanical ventilation is indicated whenever a patient's spontaneous breathing is not adequate enough to sustain life. In such a case, a mechanical ventilator would be needed in order to support the patient until their underlying condition is reversed. Here are some of the common indications for mechanical ventilation that you should know. Insufficient oxygenation, insufficient ventilation, an acute lung injury, severe asthma, severe hypotension, and the inability to protect the airway. We've broken down each of these indications deeper into much more detail in separate videos, so definitely be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. But now we need to talk about the contraindications. When would you not want to use mechanical ventilation? In general, a patient cannot survive without adequate ventilation and oxygenation. This means that there are no absolute contraindications for mechanical ventilatory support. Because if a patient needs help breathing and requires full ventilatory support, they are likely going to need mechanical ventilation. There really is no way around it. The only contraindication for mechanical ventilation is if the patient legally and specifically states that they do not wish to be intubated or receive life support. This is referred to as a DNI order or do not intubate. In such a case, the patient may receive bi-level positive airway pressure instead as a form of non-invasive ventilation. Moving right along, now we need to talk about the initial ventilator settings. Once it has been determined that mechanical ventilation is indicated, you must know how to properly input the initial settings. Each mechanical ventilator machine is different, so it's important to abide by the guidelines provided by the manufacturer of each type of machine. However, here are some general guidelines that you can use when determining a patient's initial ventilator settings. First, you will need to select the mode. You should know that any operational mode will work when setting up the initial ventilator settings. It's important not to get too caught up on deciding the right mode. This is especially true for the TMC exam. What's important is providing ventilation and oxygenation for the patient, which can be done using the other settings that we are about to discuss. The mode can be changed at any time once support has been initiated. With that said, just as a reminder, you can select assist control if the patient needs full support or SIMV if they only need partial support. Then you will need to input the initial tidal volume. The initial tidal volume setting should be 5 to 10 milliliters per kilogram of the patient's ideal body weight. So if you know the patient's ideal body weight, then you can easily calculate the initial tidal volume setting on the ventilator. 
Now I realize that many of you guys were probably taught to use 6 to 8 milliliters per kilogram as the range for the initial tidal volume. Yes, that one technically is correct as well, and it's actually even more precise. But through my experience, using 5 to 10 milliliters per kilogram will still help you come up with the correct answer, and it makes the calculation much easier because you can quickly do it in your head. But like I said, it's up to you. You can use whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Then you need to input the frequency. The initial frequency setting should be 10 to 20 breaths per minute. Next is the FIL2. The initial FIL2 setting should be 30 to 60% unless the patient was previously receiving a higher percentage of oxygen before intubation. If that's the case, then you would simply use that previous FIL2. For example, if a patient in the emergency department was receiving 100% oxygen via a non-rebreathing mask, once they're intubated, initially you would set them up with an FIL2 of 100% and then titrate them down from there. Otherwise, if a new patient was not receiving oxygen, this is when you should stay within the 30 to 60% range. Keep in mind that, in general, you should strive to provide the lowest concentration of oxygen that's possible in order to maintain a normal PaO2. As I mentioned, an FiO2 up to 100% as an initial setting is appropriate for patients with severe oxygenation issues. Just keep in mind that you'll want to try to titrate and wean them down below 60% as soon as possible. Next up is the flow rate. The initial flow setting should be 40 to 60 liters per minute. Then there is the IE ratio. The initial IE ratio setting should be 1 to 2 to 1 to 4. The initial sensitivity setting should be between negative 1 and negative 2 centimeters of water pressure. And finally, we have the PEEP. The initial PEEP setting should be 4 to 6 centimeters of water pressure. Again, in order to fully understand the initiation of mechanical ventilation, it's extremely important to learn about the initial settings to use when first setting up a new patient on the ventilator. Real quick guys, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. It really helps support the channel and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And while you're down there, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well because we have a ton of other videos on our channel that I think you will enjoy. Just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. And if you want to dive deeper and learn more about this topic, you can go to respiratorytherapyzone.com where we have a ton of free study guides, practice questions, and other helpful resources. I'll drop links to everything you need right below this video down in the description. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have a blessed day and as always, breathe easy my friend.